I, I would like to take a moment to point out though that this change around eccrine coils is kind of interesting. And I feel like I see this pretty often in particularly in the distal extremities. As you get close to the hands and feet, you often get abundant myxoid change or mucin in the stroma around the eccrine coil. And it kind of splays apart and dilates the, the, the space the coil takes up and pushes the coil, each individual tubule apart from each other. I do not know why this happens. It's so frequent, I feel like, in the distal extremities that I wonder if it is just a normal variation there. I also feel like I see it in settings where there's inflammation or reactive process happening nearby. So I've also come to think that maybe it is more abundant, uh, this stuff happens in the setting of reactive processes, but I do not have a good answer for you. If you're watching this online and you know some great literature about this, I'd love to have a link posted down below to that article. Because I've, I've observed this a lot over the years and I feel like people see it and if they've not noticed it before, they're like, whoa, what is going on with the eccrine coil? But if you once you know that this can happen, you'll start looking and you'll encounter this. I think I see it a little more often maybe in soft tissue cases where they're going way down deep, like taking a, you know, something from the synovium above the ankle and they happen to get some skin and they've got some bursitis or something on the foot, things like that. And then I see, oh, these big you know, myxoidy expanded eccrine coils in the background. So I feel like maybe I encounter it more than other people in Dermpath because I also do soft tissue and see these larger, deeper excision specimens that we don't see as often in Dermpath. So uh, just so you know, that, that that's a weird phenomenon that I don't know that it means anything. Also, I would point out, this is a faded slide, so you can't tell, but it, on a new h &E, this is almost certainly myxoid, blue, mucin, myxoid, hyaluronic acid. And around eccrine coils, I ignore blue mucin or mixed material. I do not use that as evidence of connective tissue disease like lupus. I find that it is normal to have a variable amount of mixoid material around here, just like you see it in the lining of a nerve inside the perineurium. In those settings, I totally ignore it and I don't use that as a useful clue to diagnose lupus at all. I will only use, you know, A, having the right inflammatory pattern and also interstitial mucin. That's where I'm looking. But I think this comes up sometimes. And so in my book, I just ignore any mucin around the eccrine coil as not being helpful to be a point towards connective tissue disease. Obviously not related to this context of this case here, but I just thought it was a good time to bring it up while I was thinking of it. And since I've been verbose on you know, every other single case this morning for the past three hours, why not on the last one?